I have an egg. Not this egg. This egg. The Zara Picasso, otherwise known as the egg car. Now these things have been uh, in my top list of most hated looking cars. I mean, look at it. Personally, yeah, up there in my hated cars. The Multipla, the PT Cruiser, the Picasso, all in their tier of just ugly looking vehicles, really. But I've never actually driven one. So today, I have the chance. So we're gonna take it for a little test run and see, is it really that bad? And should I hate them as much as I do? See, as you can see, every angle of this car is just, just too round. This, I mean, look at it. Look at the front of it. I mean, it just, it's just not pretty. And the same can go from the back end. It's just wrong. Something about it is just wrong. So, there's a lot of versions of this car. You've got the standard LX, the SX, which was then re later replaced by the Desire and the VTR. There's also an exclusive model which had all of the interior features. I'm not 100% sure what model this is. It could even be the exclusive because we've got a lot of features inside this car. Some of them actually came with sunroofs as well, which this one has. We've covered the outside of the car. It's not a very pretty sight at all. But what's the inside like? Well, we're at the back, so let's see what the boot's got. Yeah, as you can see, plenty of space. For all your shopping and all your goods, you could probably even fit a person in there. Maybe a cameraman. Wait, no. Or you could fit me in there too. That 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 works. We've got plenty of little cubby holes all hidden around the car. Look at that. You could fit some stuff in there. Very good. Very good indeed. We've got straps for some sort of cargo that requires straps. This parcel shelf, the elastic doesn't look too great, but there it is has one of the cool old sun visor things as well that's quite retro and obviously you can unhook that you know important little features that no one actually cares about as we can see in the rear of the vehicle we've got three whole seats which is pretty cool usually you just get a silly little middle seat and these seats fold down really easy all we've got to do all we've got to do is pull that lever and it folds down to stage one, which is very nice. And all three seats do this, even the middle seat can fold down and then pull up the bar. Easy fold down seat look. And the middle seat, you even get some cup holders and a little tray. Look at that. But what if you want to smuggle things? Well, Citroen's got you covered because if you pull back the carpet, you have some underfloor storage. Very cool. Just don't get caught by the police dogs because they will sniff that out. Nice decent sized door. Easy to enter the vehicle. As you can see, we have absolutely tons of leg space and even got little trays that fold down for your kids to put their tablets on or whatever they do these days and even hold a cup. Very cool, very useful indeed. Not the most finest of quality things but it will do the job but it doesn't fold itself away nice and smooth or anything fancy that you'd get in like a Mercedes or a Bentley. As we can see in the middle here still plenty of room there's no middle bulge in the middle at all which is very nice it's a very strange car I'm not used to one that just has such an open flooring which even as a middle seat passenger it's comfy which is quite a nice design I must say. So, the interior of the vehicle, as we can see, it's this nice beige colour, which might not be everyone's cup of tea, but to be fair, um, I dig it. I kind of dig it, you know. It's not too much black plastic. It's quite nice. Obviously, we've got the gear knob in the middle there, which reminiscent of a van, but we'll see what that's like later on. So, obviously, we've got some nice plush leather seats, also in a sort of greyish 
beige colour, little armrest as well. But all in all, these are actually really nice seats. They're comfy, they support you really well, and they're quite nice leather. As we can see, this one's a little bit warm, but what can you expect from a car of said age? Ah, right. So inside the car, we are greeted with a steering wheel. Quite a useful feature in a car, I might say. All your standard dials, indicator stalk, light flashes, yeah, you know what it is. We've also got cruise control here on the side, which I have tried, does work reasonably well, sometimes. And over here we've got the stereo control, which doesn't work because someone's put in an aftermarket stereo and really poorly. That's not the car's fault. Down here we've got our buttons for our windows. Personally, I don't like them there, but that's a very personal preference. We've also got a button to stop the kiddies playing around with the windows in the back. Quite useful if you get annoyed at your kids. We've also got ESP off, which is electronic stability control. So if you don't want uh, stability, you can turn that off. So you can do some sweet drifts. Don't think it's a drifter. We've also got your temperature control, pretty average stuff, all the usual. It's got air con, which is, works really well actually. We've got the display in the centre here, all your date, time, temperature, all the useful things, speedo. Hasn't got a rev counter though, don't know why. Then fuel and temperature over there, but I think you need a magnifying glass to read that. Either that or I need to get a pair of glasses. We've also got plenty of storage to match the rest of the car. Loads of little cubby holes. This is a bit rattly. Build quality may not be 100%, but to be fair, it doesn't seem too bad. And it's apparently done near enough, 500 miles short of 200,000 miles. Now, I had no idea till I looked at that recently. I would have not have guessed that when I started driving it a couple of days ago when I first picked it up as a loan car. And of course we got massive amounts of space in the door cards and the glove box there. And we've even got spaces up on the dashboard here to mount, to put whatever, your phone, anything, and it shouldn't slide off, which is quite nice, but I don't know. Personally, I don't like the massive dashboard. I just think it's a bit too much and distracting from the road. It's always as big as your forehead. You're not allowed to speak. For people that like to sit quite high up or people that have difficulty getting in and out of cars, these are quite good. Bit of a step up to get into them, but it's quite a nice seating position and a decent entrance and exit. As you see, quite a natural form of getting in and out, slide in. It's pretty good. So as we can see, we've got the nice double glazed sunroof, which is spans the majority of the roof. It's actually quite nice. And if we turn the ignition on, it even works. So the practicality seems really good. It's spacious, it's got so many features for your family, or just to load it up full of your tools, which I have done on a hasty work evening. It's taken all of my tools and me just throwing them in there, which is pretty impressive. But how does it drive? So I've had this for a couple of days, I've already been driving it, but let's go take it for a little bit of a test run. Right, let's fire her up. Quite a silent starter, but bit of a rattle to it, but I think this one has a slight worn engine mount. Pure power! So we're out on the road now and surprisingly actually it's got quite a nice driving position. The seats are comfy, you sit nice and level and all in all it doesn't drive that bad. So and for what it looks like I thought it would handle like a dog's turd but actually it's quite a nice vehicle to drive. Engine pulls quite well being a diesel, turbo kicks in at some higher RPM. But all in all, driving experience so far has been quite reasonable. So obviously you sit quite high up in this car because the seats are quite high. So that does take away from the handling a little bit because you're sort of higher up in the uh, centre of mass. But we're going to go around some corners and see how she handles. Not too bad, really. 
being a egg as it is, I sort of thought it would roll over at the sight of a 10 degree bend, but no, it clings to the road quite well. We <laughs> had a little bit of tire scale there as well. One thing I do find annoying about this car, a little bit gutless off the line, I must say, coming up to a junction like we are here, obviously I've got to wait uh, for my chance to go, it's all going on here, it's all going on. It's just, just doesn't have that go that I expected, like, because I'm used to my Zantia, turbo kicks in, low revs, you've got a lot of torque from the low revs, but this 1.6, still a HDI engine, but just doesn't, You've got to wait, you know? You've got to wait for that to kick in. You put your foot down, you're expecting it to go, and then it's like, yeah, okay, I see what you're doing. Oh, you can go now. It's just not as responsive as I'd hoped. The ride is actually not too bad. We just went over a railway crossing, quite a bumpy one. And coming from someone who is used to driving a Zantia with the hydraulic suspension, it's actually not that bad for us for a car with just a normal simple suspension. I mean again from the look of the car I assumed it'd be quite an uncomfortable ride and apart from the odd bump here and there we are on some pretty rough country roads apart from the odd bump here and there it's actually quite a comfortable ride the seats do cushion you quite well although whoever was sitting in this one I think went for the recline look um, personally I don't want to sit like that so all in all it's actually impressed me with its uh, it's comfortable ride really so this is only the 1.6 diesel but it goes pretty well once you get to higher rpm the turbo kicks in so we're going to do a 0 to 60 now quite hard to do on normal roads so coming up to a junction we're going to turn out of this junction onto a fast bit of road and see how quick we can get to 60. right three two one here we go Come on! 60! Woo! So not to 60 is eventually. It will get there, but it takes a little bit of time. I don't know how quick that was. We have no stopwatch. So we'll find that out post-edit. Obviously you guys all know that. And that was slight incline. We went over a little little brow of a small bridge. So not the fairest of 0 to 60s, but to be fair, for the size of the car and the fact that it's so unaerodynamic, not too bad. <laughs> now, the dashboard. It kind of reminds me of a Fiat Multipler, and that isn't a good thing. And even worse, say I'm going down the road and I meet a speed camera. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to read my speed. Hang on while I get my reading glasses on. Oh, I've already hit the speed camera. Never mind. Don't worry, I didn't get a speeding ticket. I crashed into the speeding camera because I was too busy looking half a mile away at the dashboard. Like, there is half a mile of dashboard between me and the window that I'm trying to look out of. And that does distract me from driving this car. I mean, I'm looking straight, but all I can see is a mile of beige. Like a beige sea of just nothing. The speedo and rev counter should be here. Well, I can glance down and just see them. However, Citroen thought, let's go put them over there in the middle. And it hasn't even got a rev counter. Why? I don't need one because I'm a good driver. I can listen to the engine, but why? How do I know when I'm going to hit the rev limiter? Oh. <laughs> the brakes work quite well. Not as sudden as a Citroen, like my Xantia, because I'm used to the Hydro. But they work quite well, as you can see by the fact I've given my audience whiplash. Wow. 
So, impressions are pretty good. The gears are pretty solid, smooth gear changes, nothing wrong with the gearbox at all. You know where they are and they select really well actually. I mean, considering it's done 200,000 miles, you wouldn't even know. And overall the noise, it's not a silent car. We can't deny that. You can hear the engine, but it's not droney, it's pretty quiet, it's reasonable over the bumps, it's not too loud. Little bit of trim rattle here and there from things like the sunroof cover and a little bit of rattle on the door card, but considering how many miles it's done and its age, barely really, it's not really much to go by. Typical UK roads, we've come up to a, a roadworks where nothing is happening. Excellent. So, the question. I see a lot of these driving around and I've always wondered, what do people see in them? Because they're, they're eggs. So I wondered, are they excellent? Are they exciting? Yeah, see, see, see what I did there? <laughs> but it does beg the question, what do people see in it? Personally, if you want to buy an old Citroen, you'd go for a quirky one. That's, that's the whole idea. An older Citroen, you'd go for something with the hydraulic suspension. Something that lifts up and down. This doesn't have that. Does it have the quirky space age looks? No, it looks like an egg. It seems to me that the quirk of this car is the fact of how it looks and I guess that worked for the PT Cruiser and possibly the Fiat Multipla because I suppose most people know that because of the way it looks but mm, I don't think that's a particularly good thing. It's not excellent but it's good just good and that's all this practical car needs to be good so the Picasso all in all it's ugly. Let's not let's not deny it any further. It's an ugly car and it will still be called the egg car. But and I don't want to say this, practicality wise, it's actually pretty good. So there we are. I can see why people own it. But there we have it for my review of this car. I guess I've got to return it to its rightful owners. And I have the proper hat for the car as well. Cheerio! It's also got very good aircon. Ah, oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs>